afternoon, everyone. So thanks for coming. So in the morning, I'm going to present my joint work with Eikakut and Daniel Masni for the um, optimal security pool for signatures from identification scheme. So basically, in this paper, we mainly um, talk about the phi Shamir transformation, which um, transform an identification scheme to a signature scheme. So one of the famous, like or one of the like the textbook example is the Snow signature. And there's many results on the Snow signature, for example, the forking lemma or the reset lemma or some improvement on the security pool. And also at the same time, there's some impossibility result which showing that the reduction has to lose a factor of Q and so on and so forth. So in this work, I'm going to um, propose a modular um, proof framework which can simplify this um, um, security analyze. And also at the same time, I'm going to give a time reduction from the single user security to a multi-user security. So um, this talk is mainly focused on the tightness, so I'm going to explain what is the tightness. So basically, the tightness is defined like, um, in terms of a success ratio. So basically, it's the epsilon uh, divided t, so epsilon is the um, advantage of the adversary, and t is the running time of the adversary. Okay. So usually in the security pool, we always do this. We always assume that if there is a adversary who can um, break the scheme with success ratio rho, then we can construct some reduction which can break the underlying assumption, for example, the script log with uh, success ratio rho prime, and there is some security loss, let's say capital L. So if the security loss is some constant, then we say the security reduction is tight. Otherwise, we say the security reduction is non-tight. For example, um, your security loss is some large polynomial of uh, security parameter lambda. Okay? For example, like the number of users. So why we care about the tightness? Because we want some uh, efficient scheme, right? So if, let's say we want the scheme to have like 80-bit um, um, secure, and if you have a non-tight scheme, let's say you assume your number of users is 2 to 30, then you end up with some, you need to um, essentiate your, for example, your group with a larger parameter. Okay? That's why we care about the tightness. So in the following, I just want to remind you what is a phi Shamir transformation. So so first of all, it's the identification scheme. So for identification scheme, it's an interactive um, protocol where you have the prover, um, which holds the secret key. You also have a verifier, which holds the public key. And it's a free run protocol. So the first one is called commitment. So the prover sends com commitment. And then the verifier sends some random challenge. And then the prover needs to respond. And the verifier will accept it uh, via a deterministic algorithm V. So either you accept the proof or not. So when you want to convert it to a signature, so basically it's just one important step. You just need to um, compute your random challenge via a hash, which is a random oracle. You just hash the R and the message as your random challenge, and then you get the signature scheme. Okay? So as I said before, one of the important instantiation is Snow signature, which is if you use the forking lemma, you can prove um, the Snow, the security is based on a discrete block in the random oracle model. And also, there's some impossibility results showing that um, your security reduction has to lose at least a factor of Q, which is the number of your random oracle queries. Okay? And for the security model, you have to use um, a programmable random oracle. You need the programmability for the security pool. Okay? So, but if you look closer to this uh, impossibility result, actually, it's quite specific to the Snow case. For example, in the surround result, it assumed the reduction assume the reduction is uh, algebraic, which is really specific to the Snow case. Uh, for example, for the FS, uh, FJS14, it also assumes the reduction is a generic group algorithm. Okay. So a natural question to ask is that, uh, is it possible to generalize this impossibility result to any um, signature schemes via the phi Shami transformation? Okay. And also, at the same time, there is one important property, is the multi-user security, right? Because nowadays, like usually the crypto system involves many users, so it's important to consider this security notion. So for the reduction from single user to multi-user, um, there's a trivial reduction, which you basically just guess the, um, the challenge user, the target user, and then you lose a factor of n, which is the number of your user. Okay. So in 2002, there's a paper showing that for small case, actually you can do a tight reduction okay, in a standard model. 
But unfortunately, like um, last year, um, the bursting shows that actually the proof in 2002 is there's some issue there, okay? And then he fixed it by um, proposed a variant of Schnorr signature, which is called p prefixing. And then for this, um, for this variant of Schnorr signature, then you get a tight reduction. Okay? So now the question to ask is that, is there some way to uh, fix the proof in 2002, right? So is there, is there a tight reduction for the original Schnorr signature? Because the key prefixing Schnorr signature is some variant of it. And maybe more generically, it's saying that, um, is there any tight reduction for any, like, any signature scheme, like generic signature schemes via the um, Fleischer linear transformation? So that's the motivations of this work. So in this paper, I, I'm going to give a modular proof framework, which simplify the um, security analyze. In particular, we generalize the impossibility result for any signature scheme from the Fleischer linear transformation which shows that um, for all these trans um, signature schemes, it has to lose a factor of Q, and also needs a programmable landmark. And also we give a tight security reduction from single user setting to the multi-user setting, um, if the identification scheme is random self-reducible in a random Oracle model. Okay. We sort of fix the uh, proof in the, in the 2002. So now in the following, I'm going to give you a big picture of our framework, and then I'm going to sketch like the reduction for the single user to the multi-user um, security. Okay. So now I give the um, overview of our framework. So our framework starts from the um, Ricker's um, security notion for the allocation scheme, which is called key recovery security against key only attack. So what it's basically doing is that the adversary only gets the public key, and he needs to sort of extract this valid secret key out of that, which is the Ricker's postbook. It doesn't get any other Oracle clues. Okay, and then in the end, we want to convert the uh, um, identification scheme to a uh, UFCMA secure. Yeah? So the, the goal is to have a UFCMA secure signature scheme. Okay? So actually, um, for the, so here I'm going to, in the following, I'm going to consider a weaker notion, which is called um, UFKOA, like unforgeability against key only attack. So basically, we don't have, the adversary doesn't have the um, signing queries. And there's a um, previous result showing that if the identification scheme is uh, on this verified seal knowledge, then you can transfer it. So in the, all right, so all the previous result just goes from the key recovery security to the UFKOA security, okay? So it's, it's, it's a large step, but in our framework, we just consider this in a small step. So we simplify the proof and also, we also simplify the impossibility too. So let's see. Okay, so we, in the following, I'm just drop the CMA security. We just consider to the KOA security. So the first step, we just um, like um, convert the key recovery to attack to the impersonation attack. So the impersonation attack is just a standard impersonation attack. Okay, so for this proof, we require the um, special soundness for the allocation scheme, and we also need a rewinding technique. In particular, if the allocation scheme has the random self disability then this reduction is tight, okay? And we also give a meter reduction to show that there, if you don't use um, rewinding technique, there is no um, security reduction from um, KRKOA to MKOA. Okay. And the second step is that we transfer the impersonate, we, we, we have a, we parallel the, um, the, the impersonation attack security to a PIM KOA security. So the reduction here, we require the guessing technique we just guess where is the Chinese um, section, and then the security is going to lose a factor of Q. We also show that this step is, the security loss is optimal. You can't do it better. And the last step is somehow trivial. You just need to program the random oracle, then you get the UFKOA security. So here we also show that you need the programmability for the random oracle for this reduction. Okay? And that's basically the overview for the single user setting. And now I'm going to move on to the multi-user setting. Okay, I'm going to convert, um, trans transform the UFKOA to the UFCMA in the multi-user setting. Okay, so for this step, I need a random self disability for the identification scheme and also the honest verified zero knowledge property. And this step is done in the random oracle set. Okay, and in particular, if we also show that um, from DDH assumption or fire hiding assumption, you get a direct um, construction for the tight 
PIMKLA security, which means that if you go through our framework, then in the end you get a tightly secure signature in a multi-user setting based on DDH or file hacking assumption. Okay. So actually this step, like from the um, single user to the multi-user CMA security, we actually have two small steps. So the first step is that uh, we convert uh, KOA security in the single user setting to the multi-user setting if the identification scheme has the random self visibility And this step is done in a standard model. We don't require any, um, um, any property of like any random oracle here for the first step. And the second step, we need a programmable random oracle, then we can convert to the um, CMA security. Okay, so let's see the first step. So what does it mean by KOA security in a multi-user setting? So basically, it's also somehow straightforward. So in a multi-user setting, you have n public key. Okay. And then like when you, um, and then the forgery is a forgery for the I star public key. Okay. It's somehow straightforward. So here I need some property called um, random self visibility, which basically saying that um, um, there's a rerun algorithm. If you give me a public key, I can re-randomize. I can re-randomize a public key. And also, I also give you a chapter. And with the chapter, there's an algorithm called Chan, which can convert a valid transcript for public key PKI to a valid transcript under public key. I can go it back, so sort of say. But it's for the, um, for the protocol transcript. Okay, so once you have this property, actually the reduction is somehow straightforward, right? Because um, your public key basically is just rerun your public key and then you send your public key to the adversary. So when you get the forgery from the adversary, you use the chapter to convert to the public, to a valid transcript for the public key. Okay? And then you, 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 you have your security. Okay? That's somehow straightforward. And here we don't need any random oracle here. And the second step is more involved actually. So the second step we need, um, the identification scheme has the honest verify zero knowledge property. So what it's saying that is that um, for honest verify zero knowledge, basically there is six uh, simulator, which inputs the public key, then you have, then you output a, a, a protocol transcript, which distribute identically to the real transcript with respect to the public key PK. Okay. That's the honest verify zero knowledge. So, um, now I'm going to first define what does it mean for uh, UFCMA in the multi-user setting, which is somehow straightforward. You have n public key, and so here is you are in the random oracle, then you can have like random oracle queries, and also you can ask uh, signing on the, um, under the public key PK um, IJ, and then you get back the, the signature, and then you send the forgery. Okay. It's a straightforward. So in forward, I'm going to construct reduction which can break um, the um, UFKOA in the multi-user setting. Okay. So actually, it looks, at the first, at the first time, you, it looks quite straightforward, right? Because we can try to solve the trivial solution, but actually this solution does not work. Okay. So what's, what, what does it mean? So basically, for the public key, I just forward the public key. Okay. So when it comes to the random oracle query, I just, forward, okay? So the random oracle query from, from the left-hand side, I denote it as H prime, so basically, that's the random oracle query for KOA. And so when you ask me for the sign, I just use the honest verify zero knowledge to sign, the simulator to sign it, okay? And then I program the random oracle H, okay? So, so far, so good. So because the public key is distributed properly, everything's fine, and your signature is Distribute. So now comes the question is that when the awards will give you the forgery, okay? So how can you break the um, security of the KOA? So or another way to ask if, if, if this forgery is also a valid forgery for the KOA security. That's the question. Right? But actually it's not always. Sometimes it is, but not always. So let's consider the following is sort of like the critical case. No? So let's assume the awards will just ask one signing query. And then the was we reuse the message M and also the R for its forgery. Okay. And if this happened, actually the hash is inconsistent on the point R comma M, 
right? Because on your um, right hand side, um, the hash value is programmed locally by the reduction R, which is inconsistent to the random oracle um, of your left hand side, which is H prime. And S star and also like S star is valid, but it's only for the H, only for the random oracle query on, of your right hand side, but not for the H prime. Which means that if you put it to the, um, if you give it back to the KOA challenger, it's going to up zero. You are going to, it's not a valid forgery. Okay? So in the following, so how to fix this critical case? In the following, I always assume it's always in the critical case because the other case is, is simple. Okay? So our solution is to randomly generate a public key such that with um, probability one over two, we know the secret key such that we can generate a signature by asking the random oracle of your left hand side, by asking the random oracle, such that um, the hash query is consistent. Okay. So how you do that? So you just pick a random coin, BJ, and if the random coin is zero, then you know the secret key. Otherwise, you just forward the challenge public key. And when you simulate the random oracle query, it's the same, so when it comes to critical, um, you know, when, when you come to sign inquiries, so there's two cases. So either bi is equal to zero, which actually is a good case because I know the secret key, and then I simulate the signature, and when I simulate the signature, I ask the or random oracle h prime. And then I program the h such that these two are consistent, okay? And if, if bi is equal to one, which is the bad case, but it only happened with one over two probability, which is a constant, okay? So when you're done with this, uh, now you come the um, forgery, and now you want to extract the, for, like the forgery for the um, KOA security. So now um, for the BI, for the um, hash query, so now it's consistent with um, one over two. <coughs> And I was, we also need to make sure that uh, PKI star is really coming from the challenge, which also happened, which means the BI star is equal to one, which also happened with one over two probability. So in the end, the reduction can break the um, um, UFKOA security in a multi-user setting with un one over four uh, times the epsilon of eight. Then you finish your, then, then your reduction is tight here, okay? And that's, that's basically um, the, the security pool, okay? That's basically the idea, okay? And now I'm going to um, summarize um, this paper. So basically this paper give a new framework to prove the security of the file share transformation. It starts from the weakest possible um, security notion, which is called key recovery attack against, um, key recovery security against key only attack. And then we go all the way until um, UFCMA in a multi-user setting, okay? And all these steps are tight, except uh, the one in between IM and PIM. And also, like, um, the other directions are trivial, because, because there's trivial. And which means, so here, which means that um, actually the single-user security and the multi-user security, they are equivalent. They are tightly equivalent in the random oracle model. And also, in particular, um, from the DDH assumption or hiding assumption, we have a direct construction of the um, tightly PMKOA security, which basically is the um, CATS1 identification scheme or GQ identification scheme. And um, also, um, for more detail, you can go to our ePrim version, and that's all from the presentation. Thanks.